Hello everyone, you are watching another episode of Military TV. In today's session, we will answer the question why the B-52 bomber could fly for a century. The B-52H Stratofortress referred to a long-range, heavy bomber that can perform a variety of missions. This aircraft was designed and built by Boeing, which has continued to provide support and upgrades. It has been operated by the United States Air Force USAF since the 1950s. The bomber is capable of flying at high subsonic speeds at altitudes of up to 50,000 feet equals to 15,166 meters. With global precision navigation capability, it can carry nuclear or precision-guided conventional munitions. Anyway, before we move further, let's take a look at a long history of B-52. Originally, the B-52 was envisioned as a straight-wing bomber with six propeller-driven engines. In 1946, it was known as the XB-52 design. After that, the Air Force decided to make it an all-jet aircraft. The designers spent two days in Dayton, Ohio, making the necessary adjustments and producing a 33-page how-to book as well as a scale model fashioned from wood purchased from a local hobby shop. The B-52A and B-52B were developed as a result. Moreover, the Boeing company designed the B-52, popularly known as the Stratofortress, a long-range heavy bomber that was first flown in 1952 and delivered to the military in 1955. Despite being designed as an atomic bomb carrier capable of reaching the Soviet Union, the B-52 has proven adaptable to a variety of tasks, with dozens of B-52s still in service in the early 21st century. Let's take a look at its operational history. Although the B-52A was the first production variant, these aircraft were used only in testing. The first operational version was the B-52B that had been developed in parallel with the prototypes since 1951. The wing became operational on 12 March 1956. The training for B-52 crews consisted of five weeks of ground school and four weeks of flying, accumulating 35 to 50 hours in the air. The new B-52BS replaced operational B-36 is on a one-to-one -one basis. Moving further, here is some specific information regarding its design. The B-52 has a wingspan of 185 feet and a length of 160 feet. It is powered by eight jet engines mounted under the wings in four twin pods. The plane's maximum speed at 55,000 feet or 17,000 meters equals to Mach 0.9, which is 595 miles per hour or 960 kilometers per hour. At only a few hundred feet above the ground, it can fly at Mach 0.5, 375 miles per hour. It originally carried a crew of six, its sole defensive armament being a remotely controlled gun turret in the tail. In 1991, the gun was eliminated and the crew reduced to five. Furthermore, it can be noticed that the B-52 shared many technological similarities with the preceding B-47 Stratajet strategic bomber. The two aircraft used the same basic design, such as swept wings and potted jet engines, and the cabin included the crew ejection systems. For the information, the B-52 went through several design changes and variants over its 10 years of production. They include XB-52, that is two prototype aircraft with limited operational equipment, used for aerodynamic and handling tests. Followed by YB-52, which is one XB-52 modified with some operational equipment and redesignated. Also, B-52A, only three of the first production version, the B-52A, were built, all loaned to Boeing for flight testing. The other variant is NB-52A. The last B-52A, Serial 52003, was modified and redesignated NB-52A in 1959 to carry the North American X-15. B-52B or RB-52B The B-52B was the first version to enter service with the USAF on 29 June 1955 with the 93rd Bombardment Wing at Castle Air Force Base, California. There are actually some other variants to name a few. Well, the most important point that we need to highlight is do you think is it possible that this bomber might fly for another 50 years? It can be predicted that the B-52H Stratofortress remain in service for another 100 years, 
supposing that the Air Force's modernization initiatives succeed in the next decades. In fact, the iconic bomber has been in service since 1955, and experts believe it will remain in operation into the 2050s. Is that really possible? The jet's weaponry, on the other hand, are always improving as the plane receives upgrades. The B-52H can carry nuclear-tipped hypersonic missiles and precision-guided conventional bombs, among other weaponry. Furthermore, some other distinction factors that make this aircraft last longer are. First, it has a constant update of its system. The B-52H can retarget these weapons in flight. The plane is equipped with a sophisticated communication system that includes new data links. With intelligence feeds that overlay visuals on monitors employing a suite of LCD screens, it can see the battle space. Moreover, the B-52H will receive an updated radar, new engines, and improved nuclear command and control capability in the future. Second, the engines are top-notch with new ones on the way. The airplane has an extensive range. The plane has a very long range. The payload is enormous. Engineers have mastered the upkeep of many models throughout the last decade. As a result, the B-52H is a tribute to American defense innovation as a whole. For the last point, let's take a look at its recent operational performance. In February 2015, Hull 61007 Ghost Rider became the first stored B-52 to fly out of Davis Munthen Air Force Base after six years in storage. B-52 are periodically refurbished at USAF maintenance depots such as Tinker Air Force Base, Oklahoma. Even while the USAF works on the new long-range strike bomber, it intends to keep the B-52H in service until 24-5, which is 90 years after the B-52 first entered service, an unprecedented length of service for any aircraft, civilian or military. Moreover, on 9 April 2016, an undisclosed number of B-52s arrived at Al Udaid Air Base in Qatar as part of Operation Inherent Resolve, part of the military intervention against ISIL. The B-52s took over heavy bombing after B-1 Lancers that had been conducting airstrikes rotated out of the region in January 2016. Lastly, in April 2016, B-52s arrived in Afghanistan to take part in the war in Afghanistan and began operations in July, proving its flexibility and precision carrying out close air support missions. In conclusion, the USAF continues to rely on the B-52 because it remains an effective and economical heavy bomber in the absence of sophisticated air defenses, particularly in the type of missions that have been conducted since the end of the Cold War against nations with limited defensive capabilities. The B-52 has also remained in service since there has been no reliable replacement. That's all for today. If you more interesting information regarding this bomber, please feel free to drop any comments below. That's all for today, see you next time.